Хай, ОЛКРМ Лонг Тойер на Травидия. ОЛКРМ Тузенью СРБ Скрайба РРС, Хир он Ютубе. Зе Стайм, Етик и Лук Атрашн Везер Модифицион Эктиверти. Ахин Кон и Старт Зетерген. Хай, welcome along to another video. Welcome to the new subscribers, here on YouTube. This time, we'll take a look at Russian weather modification activity, starting in the 1960s and making our way up to the modern day. Sources are posted in the information section of this video. The 1960s. In 2006 the World Meteorological Organization, WMO, published its weather modification register for that year, which is now deleted from its public website, along with most of its weather modification data. The Russian Federation responded to the request for information in 2006, via Dr. Valery Stasenko at the Federal Service for Hydrometeorology and Environmental Monitoring, which is based in Novovoganovsky Lane, Moscow, and Dr. Valery Topaskanov, from the High Mountain Geophysical Institute, based in Lenin Avenue, Nauchik. The data published states that in 1960, hail suppression projects became operational. In 1967, a hail suppression project was started, in the Krasnodar region, using silver iodide dispersed by rockets and artillery shells, which carried the flares to the clouds and cloud base. Hail suppression was also operational from 1967, in the northern Caucasus region, also using silver iodide. In September 1969, Herbert S. Appleman published a paper via the Air Weather Service of the U.S. Air Force. Large-scale hail suppression efforts have been carried out for a number of years in Russia, France, Switzerland, and Italy, and smaller efforts in the United States and other countries. Results are contradictory. The Russian tests appear most promising, but it is generally agreed that further testing under scientifically controlled conditions is necessary before their conclusions can be accepted. The 1980s the WMO 2006 Weather Modification Register also states that in 1986, precipitation redistribution and precipitation enhancement projects became operational. Aircraft and rockets are used to deploy cloud seeding materials. The weather modification season starts in April and ends in October. Weather modification is also used for fog dispersal. The WMO Weather Modification Register for 1984 and 1985 stated that in 1982, a research project was carried out in the Penza region to investigate the possibilities for precipitation enhancement in the Volga River Basin using silver iodide and also dry ice which is also known as solid CO2. In 1983, a complex hail experiment was started in the kabardino balkarian region using silver iodide. 2008, in June 2008, Ian O'Neill published an article, on the Universe Today website, which covers space and astronomy news and was originally sourced via Reuters. Titled When Cloud Seeding Goes Wrong. Cement chunk falls from the sky, the articles could very well contain disinformation, as during 40 years of subject research, I have never heard of cement being used in weather modification activities. It could possibly be true that cement was used but it is unlikely. The Reuters article and O'Neill in his article states that Russian Air Force planes dropped a 25 kilograms 55 pounds sack of cement on a suburban Moscow home last week while seeding clouds to prevent rain from spoiling a holiday, Russian media said on Tuesday. A pack of cement, used in creating good weather, in the capital region, failed to pulverize completely at high altitude and fell on the roof of a house, making a hole about 80 to 100 centimeters, which is about 3 foot, police in Nerofominsk told agency RIA Novosti. Everybody on the planet knows that if you add moisture, water, to cement, it solidifies, so the likelihood of dispersing it, out of an aeroplane, is small as it would not serve its intended purpose, of creating nuclei to provide a foundational structure for water droplets to form onto. The article states further that, ahead of major public holidays, the Russian Air Force often dispatches up to 12 cargo planes, carrying loads of silver iodide, liquid nitrogen and cement powder, to seed clouds above Moscow and empty the skies of moisture. Which is not how weather modification works. If you want to empty the skies above Moscow of moisture, then you seed an area nearby, which then attracts the atmospheric moisture to that area 
thereby removing or redistributing moisture from one area to another. In this case, the target area would be surrounding Moscow and atmospheric moisture would be attracted away from the Moscow area and would fall as rain due to moisture accumulation in areas outside of Moscow. The capital city covers an urban area of about 5,000 square kilometers, which is about 2,200 square miles and has a population in both urban and metropolitan areas, combined of over 30 million people, so it is not that hard to work out that 25 kilograms of cement being dropped from an aeroplane over the Moscow area, somewhere, would have no purpose in weather modification activity. Silver iodide however, flared off during kilometers of flight and creating millions of particulates to act as raindrop nuclei, would serve the purpose. The Reuters article states, regarding the clump cement damage, that the homeowner was not injured, but refused an offer of 50,000 rubles, about 1,050 pounds, from the Air Force, saying she would sue for damages and compensation for moral suffering, Interfax said. You would think a Reuters correspondent, would know where the pound sign is on their keyboard and it would be handy to know if that is, British pounds or Egyptian, Lebanese, Sudanese, or Syrian pounds. 2009, in December 2009, the LA Times published an article, containing various statements without providing any source material for their claims. Anti-Russia bias and the same applies to China's activity, is to be expected in Western media and dramatical wording to show how bad Russia is, is also to be expected, whilst at the same time Western media, covers Western weather modification activity, as if they are saving the world from an extinction-level event. Russia uses weather modification rarely and its operations were started, decades after European and American operations. The LA Times article states, scientists are decades deep into research, on bending the weather to their will, which is an established fact. They've been at it since Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin, paused long enough in the throes of World War II, to found an observatory, dedicated to tampering with climatic inconveniences, which then implies the 1940s. There is no evidence or source provided to back up that claim. Since then, they've melted away fog, dissipated the radioactive fallout from Chernobyl and cooled down rains, fierce enough to drown unborn locusts threatening the distant northeastern grasslands. Fog dissipation started in the 1960s, Chernobyl was in the 1980s, so there is clearly no evidence of operations starting in the 1940s. Whether you agree with weather modification activity or not, and just so you know, I don't agree with it at all and I believe strongly, that every country should cease and desist on its weather modification, or climate modification programs. The weather is a hands-off thing that humans should not interfere with. That said, using the technology, to deal with radioactive fallout, from a nuclear meltdown can hardly be described as a climatic inconvenience. Even then though, the world did not learn anything and we have seen Fukushima. What comes next? Another meltdown? The world should be on free, clean energy devices by now. It's worth noting that California, where the LA Times is based, has had an active, yearly, weather modification program since the late 1940s and early 1950s and their activity of redistributing atmospheric moisture for hydroelectric power generation has created extreme drought in areas which in the 21st century are burning. Have you ever heard of California using weather modification to put out those fires? No, you haven't. California's weather modification activity is never used for climatic inconveniences, it is used to create increased water and snow melt runoff, to fuel profit-making hydroelectric power stations, most notably done, in modern times, by the Northern California Power Agency. The LA Times article continues, commenting on the proposed use, of cloud seeding to minimize snowfall in Moscow, the proposal has sent a shudder through Moscow just as the first dark, snowy days have fallen on the capital. It has also peaked the surrounding region, which would receive the brunt of the displaced snowfall, and has raised concerns among ecologists. This statement confirms that if you want to modify the weather over Moscow then you carry out operations over the surrounding region, you don't dump a 25-kilogram bag of cement over Moscow. If ecologists are concerned with Russian activity in 2009, then they also must be horrified and completely freaking out about Western activity, 
that stepped up its hail suppression operations in the early 1900s to protect winemakers' crops. There are quotes in the article, allegedly made by Russians, regarding whether modification activities carried out for Victory Day celebrations. There is a constant, clear usage of quotation marks in the article, except when cement enters the statements. All it takes, he says, is sacks of cement, 500 grade, to be precise. Drop the powder down into the clouds, and they vanish. This statement does not appear with quotation marks and is in a standalone paragraph. One paragraph stands out the most in this article, in much of the world, weather and cloud research is focused on preventing hailstorms, tornadoes, droughts and the like. Not that Russia is the only country that has used it to ensure sunny public holidays. In Beijing, clouds have been chased away from the Olympic ceremonies and other celebrations. Russia and China are the only countries mentioned in this article. Note. In reference to the rest of the world the disinformation statement that it is weather and cloud research and it is not termed correctly as weather modification activity. The rhetoric is clear, Russia and China use weather modification for party days and the rest of the world use it to save the world from ELEs. There is no mention of Western profit forcing or alcohol production. 2010, enter, the UK's military propaganda outlet, the BBC. The BBC was involved with and helped create a military intelligence operation to deliver coded messages to troops and propaganda to its adversaries via its world service during the World Wars era. It is funded to this day by an enforced license fee payment where anyone in the UK wishing to watch live TV broadcasts has to pay approximately £160 a year for a TV license. Blind and seriously visually impaired people get a 50% reduction on the fee and they must pay £85 a year. That's about 100 US dollars if they use a color TV. I am speaking the truth there. Blind people in the UK have to pay the TV license. People aged 75 years and older do not have to pay. The UK is the only country in the world that forces citizens to buy a license to watch television. No training is given to receive the license you just buy one. Licenses always require training. Citizens in countries that show BBC programming do not have to pay and are not required to have a license to watch the programs. The UK has never exited warfare since the Second World War. It is currently at war in the Middle East on behalf of Israel and in Eastern Europe on behalf of Ukraine as per 2024. The UK's Oliver's Travels, a luxury firm based in Clapham, London, offers blue sky cloud seeding, for events such as outdoor parties and weddings in the UK, with a price tag of approximately US$100,000, which is about UK pounds, Something that is clearly only affordable and requested by, pompous rich people. In March 2010, the BBC published an article titled, Russian Appeal of Weather Control. The article states, these seeded clouds never make it to Moscow, where millions are enjoying a nice sunny holiday or where guests might be dancing, at a wedding under the clear blue sky. Some might think, that controlling the weather, sounds a bit like science fiction. If you haven't read the summary, published on my Substack, or watched the video summary, here on my YouTube channel, in this playlist, about the UK's weather modification activities, which started in the 1940s, then it is worth reading, so a clear comparison can be made, between what the BBC is saying and what the UK has been doing. The USA Today news outlet has been shown recently to publish false information via its fact-checking service in regard to ionospheric heaters and cloud ionization technology being used in Brazil. In October 2010, an article was published by the USA Today outlet via an Associated Press AP article. Russia to seed clouds at 2014 Winter Olympics. The article states that clouds will be dispersed to avoid problems such as those experienced by Canada's Winter Olympics in Vancouver in 2010. No evidence, in 2014, was provided to confirm this activity had taken place. The AP article states that, in Vancouver there was a problem due to warm weather and a lack of snow. Common sense tells you that if Russia dispersed clouds, there would be no snow clouds available and due to sunshine, snow would melt, 
due to the warmer weather, which equates to the same issues as Vancouver had. The contradictory statements by the AP do not make sense. There is no mention of Canada's weather modification activity in the AP article. It is known that Canada had already started its weather modification activities by 1954 due to the statement by H. W. L. Apsalm in the paper titled Artificial Production of Precipitation for the UK's Air Ministry, MOD. Some reports of cloud seeding in other countries are available, those countries are Canada, France, India, Israel, South Africa and the United Kingdom, but they are not considered to contain information which adds materially to that given in this memorandum. For those of you not familiar with Canada's program, it is done mainly for hail suppression in the central eastern area of Canada to circumvent insurance claims for hail damage. It is funded mostly by private insurance companies to mitigate claims. You are witnessing the consequences of Canada's atmospheric moisture redistribution program in current times with the extreme fires in western Canada. 2012, the WMO has removed many of its articles and information in relation to weather modification activities, preferring to keep the subject obscured by only having a few remaining pages on its website. The WMO claims the page you're searching for no longer exists, it has been moved, or the link is broken. Please note that the WMO public website was relaunched in November 2023. Some pages may no longer exist. We apologize for the inconvenience. That is a lie, the WMO removed pages well before November 2023. If you are seeking WMO deleted pages use the Internet Archive, aka, the Wayback Machine. Relaunching the site is an excuse to mask, deleting evidential data. A WMO, now deleted, academic paper, from 2012, titled, 25 Years of Cloud Seeding Activity to Modify Weather Conditions in Cities, written by Koloskov, Korniv, Beryulev, Danelian, and Stasenko, from the Agency of Atmospheric Technologies, Agency ATEX, Ross Hydromet and the Central Areological Observatory, CAO, states during the last 20 to 30 years, considerable work has been done in Russia, on the development of methods and technical means, to dissipate some forms of clouds and preventing or substantially reducing precipitation amount over protected areas. The practical objectives of the cloud seeding activity were to reduce municipal expenses for snow removal and clearing the roads and streets in large cities, to create favorable meteorological conditions for carrying out social programs, sporting competitions, or some other situations when the necessity may arise to reduce the rainfall. The first experiment on the practical application of these opportunities, was carried out to mitigate the consequences of the Chernobyl disaster in 1986, the source on that is Beryulev et al. from 1990. Since 1995, the organizations of Ross Hydro Met conducted more than 40 experimental projects on improvement of weather conditions in areas of the large cities. Moscow and St. Petersburg, Tashkent in Uzbekistan, Astana in Kazakhstan, the source on that is, Bedritsky et al., 1996, Belayev et al., 1996, Korniv et al., 2003, Koloskov et al., 2007. The main purpose of these activities was the dispersal of clouds and reduction or prevention of precipitation over the protected areas. Try this experiment, take a shower and bring a bowl of cement powder into the shower with you, throw the cement into the air inside the shower, see what happens. During that experiment, Picture Russian scientists crying with laughter. 2014. The Moscow Times reported, in April 2014, stating that authorities could resort to cloud seeding to ensure blue skies for the May 9th Victory Day celebrations. Silver iodide, liquid nitrogen or cement particles can be released from planes into clouds, causing water molecules to coagulate and release their precipitation before they reach Moscow. Coagulation means clumping together. Rain does not work like that, they are individual droplets, hail and snow are individual frozen droplets. Hail can be huge in size due to increased frozen moisture attaching itself to the nuclei. Coagulated cement does not look like hail, it looks and behaves like cement. 
Have you ever seen melted hail that leaves lumps of solid cement on the pavement? No, you haven't. But you can imagine the scientists in the West, trying out cement-based weather modification, because the Russians use it. 2017, the Associated Press, AP, returns, on the 9th of May, with an article titled, Russia's Anti-Cloud Program Defeated On. Keep in mind, the 2008 Reuters article, where it states, the clouds over Moscow are seeded. The AP article states, Sputnik, news agency, says the technique, involves specially equipped planes, spraying dry ice and other reagents on clouds, away from the area where clear skies are desired. Let's now do another experiment, put cement powder into a spray bottle and spray it out, what happens? 2019, UK viewers of this video won't be able to access the linked YouTube video, as RT News is censored, banned and blocked in the UK, you'll need to use a VPN and set your server to a country that doesn't block Russian news outlets from being viewed by its citizens. The video published by RT News on August 2019 shows a cloud seeding aeroplane that is used to combat ravaging forest fires in Siberia. 2020, the Western media rhetoric changes in 2020, by no longer stating it is Russia carrying out cloud seeding, it is now, Putin, clearing the skies. The Australian news outlet, claimed the cloud seeding for Victory Day, cost $2.3 million. Even if that is Australian dollars that would still equate to approximately 1 million US dollars. So one day's worth of Russian weather modification, costs a million US dollars, Yet a million US dollars worth of weather modification, in the USA, would get you about two months worth of weather modification. There is something suspiciously propagandist about, the Australian, statement. The UK's, Times News outlet, reported on the 24th of June, 2020, nearly seven weeks after the event from the 9th of May, that Putin clears the skies to bask in victory parade. On the 26th of June the, Engineering and Technology, e and news outlet, ramps up the rhetoric, by claiming the victory parade is, largely perceived in the West, as another blatant gesture of saber-rattling, when in fact it has been celebrated since 1945, to recognize the end of the Second World War and the defeat of the Nazi Reich. Maybe we should consider then, that Western air shows, that showcase military aircraft and weapons conventions that showcase military tech, are also saber-rattling displays, but by the West and not the East. The ENT article goes further, by stating that Victory Day weather modification activities, are overriding what God or nature intended, which makes you wonder how ENT feels about the weather modification activities, in the USA and elsewhere, which would also then, go against what God or nature intended. The article states further, the Victory Day celebrations are, a megalomaniacal display of military strength, which we know the USA would never do, as proven by the WMD that was found in Iraq, proving the USA and UK military does not carry out illegal wars, based on false intelligence community claims, in which innocent women, men and children die and are then classed as collateral damage. On the 10th of July, the UK's Daily Mail news outlet, reported that, Russia is seeding clouds in Siberia, to fight wildfires that have been burning, across the country for weeks, reducing them to one third of their size which should be compared to Canada's cloud seeding program to mitigate insurance claims, which is causing wildfires in Western Canada due to drying out the forests and American cloud seeding programs, for profit-making hydropower schemes etc. that are causing drought and forest fires in the Western USA areas. The MSN site published a News 18 article on the 10th of July, also covering the forest fires and the cloud seeding being done to deal with it, but that article has since been deleted from its website. On the 26th of September, the Radio Free Europe Radio Liberty, Ukrainian service, published an article titled, Cloud Seeding in Crimea Precipitates Environmental Concerns. 10 out of 10 for the precipitation pun, but you do have to wonder, what the Ukrainian RFE service thinks about Western weather modification activity, such as the programs in the Alpine region of Europe to mitigate hail damage to wine crops, used in alcohol production. Do they have any environmental concerns about that? 
Is the Crimean drought natural droughts or has it been caused by weather modification activity carried out as a means to provide a blue sky clear view over the battlefield causing Russia to mitigate the consequences of the atmospheric moisture redistribution by utilizing cloud seeding to return atmospheric moisture to the area? Rules, including UN ones, are not on the table during wars. It is well known that weather modification is banned for use in military activities by a UN charter. But so are illegal wars based on false claims and that didn't stop anyone from doing it did it? UN charters are not stopping what is happening in the Palestinian-Israeli conflict are they? How are UN charters working out in the Sudan? That was a summary of Russian weather modification activity. I hope you learnt something from it. I would like to thank my colleague, Rush Ambot, for their help, in disseminating the propaganda, from the facts, in producing this video. I'll be back, with some more news soon. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time.